Hey, good morning. I'm Pastor Art, and I hope that today, as we uh, gather together digitally, online, we will be able to be encouraged where we find ourselves. Um, it is in a new year, and we are now in officially 2021. And so I don't know, uh, perhaps if you've felt a change yet uh, for 2021, but I hope that in these just a couple days, uh, we would have a, some encouragement toward a new year ahead. And we're going to be looking at some different things today. We're going to be looking actually beginning a series talking about who Jesus is. Um, and speaking actually from these really cool statements called these I am statements um, in the book of John. But before we get going, let's have some fun uh, as we begin our time together. Uh, if you're in a group, and so I've encouraged some of you to be together in your bubbles and be together. If you are in your bubble groups and you have more than one person, okay, this is what I want you to do, Okay. I want you to uh, I want you to choose someone. So alphabetically, if you're in a group of people, alphabetically, whoever's name comes first. Okay, so if your name is Art, like mine, you might be first. Okay, and we're going to do a couple questions and go in order. Okay, alphabetical order. Some of you um, have uh, different different names and things like that, so we can walk through. Some of you have families, and we'll do about four or five fun things. Okay, and this is what we're going to do. There's a game that I played around Christmas time. Okay, with some fun people, and it's called uh, What If. Or, I'm sorry, imagine if, okay? And it's a game where what you do is you describe, people go around, and at some point, it's like, it's my turn. So the whole group answers one question about one person, and they see how many people agree or disagree. The goal is actually to agree with whatever everyone else would think. The funny thing is, uh, and I saw this a couple times, when uh, these questions come out, this large group that we were playing with, um, a person 
as it's being described, they themselves think they're something else than everybody else. Have you had that before? Maybe you have some, I don't know if it's blind spots, but just fun things about yourself that you know that others may not know, or <laughs> there may be things that are obvious to everyone else and maybe you don't know. Uh, but anyways, let's have some fun with this, okay? Please, uh, no fighting or pushing after this, okay? If there's kids involved. But um, what we're going to do, and this will be fun, okay? What I want you to do is with your hand, I want you to um, one, two, three, four, or five, okay? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read off a describer, okay? And so, and, and so whoever that alphabetically is first, so if, if I was in the room, art, I would, this one would probably be about me first, okay? Or, or someone else that starts with A maybe, or B. And then, and then let's go in order, okay, the next person. And so let's just have some fun with this, okay? And what we're gonna do is this. Um, I'm gonna read off a list of five potential describers of who that person is. So whoever alphabetically is first in your room, I want you to think about that, okay? That's the person, okay? And I want you to alpha, or describe that as you do. Um, I'm going to walk through five different options and I want you to put up the number you think that person most represents. Wait till I'm done with all five and then all at once we're gonna do it, okay? Got that, is that clear? Clear, okay, clear? Yeah, okay, here we go. All right, so this is the alphabetically first person in your group, okay? So be looking around, everybody know who that is? Okay, mark that who it is, okay? And so, imagine if that person were a bird. What would he or she be? One, would they be a bald eagle? Two, a hummingbird. Three, a roadrunner. Four, a whooping crane. Or five, a chicken. One, a bald eagle, two, a hummingbird, three, a roadrunner, four, a whooping crane, or five, a chicken. Ready? One, two, three. I would say, I would say roadrunner for me. I, I'm zooming around everywhere. Um, what about you? Look around the room. Okay, what did everybody put up? Is that what that person is? Is that what you are? Okay, no punching, no pillows throwing right now, okay? Let's have fun, okay? Because you get a chance to go back, okay? So we got another one, okay? So the next person in line, the next person, uh, the next person, uh, let's get ready, okay, ready? So the next person alphabetically, we ready? Okay, we got this down now, okay? Get your hands ready, okay, here we go. This next person, okay, well imagine in my family, um, it, would be, uh, it would be Emma, okay? I'll be thinking of my daughter, Emma. Shout out to you, honey. Okay, uh, what if, okay, you were a musical style. What would he or she be? If this person were a musical style, what would they be? Would they be one, country western, <laughs> two, hip hop, three, smooth jazz, four, punk, or five, opera? One, country music, two, hip hop, three smooth jazz, four punk, or five opera. Ready? One, two, three, go. What would they be? Oh, yeah. I'm thinking of my daughter, Emma. Emma Emma would be two. She, close of those things, she'd be hip hop, probably more like indie music and stuff, but hip hop would be what she would be. What about you? What about you? What about the people in your groups right now? Yeah. Uh, I'm just imagining these families right now, hopefully not fighting, but thinking about different things and laughing actually about some inside jokes maybe because you know each other, right? You know, you know things about each other, okay? We're not done yet, okay? Here we go. The third person in the room, okay? And if you only have two people in the room and you're watching this, then, then go back to the next person, okay? Choose another person, but this is alphabetically the third person in your group, okay? Um, and, and let's do this, ready? Okay, ready? If you were a display of friendship, what would he or she be, okay? A one, would they be a kiss? Two, a hug? Three, a firm handshake? Four, a high five? Or five, a slap on the back? One, a kiss. Two, a hug. Three, a firm handshake. Four, a high five? Or five, a slap on the back. Okay, ready? 
One, two, three. What would you be? I'm thinking of my wife right now. She would be two. She'd be two. She'd be a hug. She'd be a hug. She's a hugger. To, the, to her family, she's a really big hugger. So, um, two, hugger. So what about you? What about in your groups? What would you be? Who are you? What are you most like? What's that person most like? Okay, here we go. We're not done yet. We're not done yet. Here we go. We got one more. Now, if you've got more than one person, your, or the four people in your family, if you've got more than people there, then I want everyone else involved, okay? I want you to use two hands now. Hopefully, there's not more than five. But you go ahead and choose two more people, the final people that you're going to be doing this question for, okay? Work that out among yourselves, okay? But this is the last one, and I want you to imagine this, okay? We're ready. We got our person or persons ready, okay? If you were a musical instrument, if this person were a musical instrument, what would he or she be? Okay. One, piano. Two, drums. Three, banjo. Four, electric guitar. Or five, an accordion. Aha. So one, a piano. Okay. Two, drums. Three, banjo. Four, electric guitar. And five, accordion. What would that person be? Ready? Five, four, three, two, one. I would put, yeah. My son would be an electric, electric guitar, I think. He'd be, electric, he'd be a guitar, electric guitar, among those things. What about you? What would those people be like? Yeah, I, I, I love the interaction. I, I wish I'm imagining being in the living room with you or wherever you're gathering today, um, talking back and forth uh, as we interact and do it digitally today. Uh, and you could put things in your comments too. But, but if you were to say, if you were to say this about yourself, the funny thing is in this game, oftentimes if we were voting for ourselves, <laughs> which I encourage you to do um, in those moments when you vote for yourself, what one you're most like, sometimes it's all spot on. Like everybody has the same number. But then other times... Others have a number and then you have a different number. And you're like, woo. And, um, and, and so there's an idea of this image of kind of who someone is and then, and then actually kind of what they do that supports that. Right. And so I think that the more we know each other, um, sometimes we can know people's mannerisms and know things about them in deeper ways. But I do think there's um, places that sometimes even the best people, the people that know us best, sometimes miss if we were to finish the phrase, I am. I am. So these things that we did a little bit ago, just kind of for fun, are actually using the same type of inner imagery. So whether we talk about instruments or styles of music, um, we're, we're thinking in comparative kind of somehow bringing a characteristic of that up against a person that we know and saying they're kind of like this or kind of like that. It's uh, sometimes simile or, or metaphor that helps us expand and understand um, more than just a simple statement, um, something about a person. So uh, actually, as we move farther, we're thinking about ourselves or even others around us. I think that's helpful for us even to taste and see what is up in the Bible passage we're going to be looking at today, or even the series about the I am's of Jesus. In these statements, Jesus is trying to communicate, I think most clearly through very clear imagery or expansive metaphor, okay, who the character of God is and what that means for us, what that means for the people that are, that as they hear this, how they respond gives us kind of a direction to move forward also as ones who are aware of this characteristic of God that's captured in some metaphor that makes a difference for us. In the same way, a person in your family that's, that's uh, more like a piano or drums or the banjo or electric guitar or accordion, whatever you chose for that one, okay, and that person, there's something in that that represents them or connects us to understand them better. And if God is like these metaphors in the person of Jesus, then it has actually immediate implications on our lives. 
The word I am, or when we're going to look at this, it's, it's ego, a me in Greek, okay? And I've said this numerous times, but it stands out. Um, a me in Greek just means I am, okay? Um, it, it's a simple verb, okay? Um, ego is I. It's like the, the pronoun I that we would use. But you, we usually, when we're speaking, don't say I, I am. It sounds, I do, because I'm a stutterer sometimes, <laughs> which is ironic that I'm a preacher. But, but anyways, uh, I stutter all the time, or I'm, I'm trying to get words out and say them wrong. It's the humor of God. God loves using us in our strengths and our weaknesses. But uh, to get back to this, I am, okay? It would sound like I, I am in our ears. As when we read the text, or the Hebrews would hear this text, they, and I've said this before, they would right away go, whoa, hold on. What? Hold on. That, that in their ears, and hopefully in ours as I explain this a little bit, there would be a pause and go, hold on. I've heard that before. I've heard it before. If we look at the text, and we're going to be walking through together this I am, the I am's, and we're going to be walking through a book together. Um, you don't have to get this, but if you do, we've been talking about the last several weeks about getting this as a, as a daily devotional for the next 50 days as we begin this series. We're beginning today to read this, okay? Even if you don't have it yet, you can still get it and catch up with us. They're daily devotions, and then our weekly gatherings are kind of our weekly kind of small groups, those socially distanced and, and making sure there's space. Um, we'll be at Westview Community Church until we get into our building in the next few weeks or several weeks. We're going to be gathering there and there'll be small groups around this as well. You don't have to have the book to come or even be involved, but these are daily devotions that will work with the sermons and even our, our weekly gatherings for refuel as well. And so it, this is, th and in this book, he talks a little bit about setting up this I am, the I am's that I uh, am trying to walk through and try to make sure that we get to understand a little better, okay? And what that is, is when you speak about I am, it comes from a place in the book of Exodus initially, right? In the Hebrew language, in the, in the Hebrew Bible, or sometimes we call it the Old Testament, but the Hebrew Bible, that as we're looking at that, God reveals something about himself in conversation with Moses in chapter 3 in Exodus. They've, they've, they've been, uh, um, um, the people of Israel cap are, uh, been captured and they've been imprisoned for almost years, working as slaves for 400 years actually, in Egypt. And they're crying out to God and God hears their prayer and calls Moses in this obscure mountain area uh, near Mount Sinai. And a bush is burning, but not burning up. And he's like, what is that? And he goes near it. And then God encounters, he meets God. And as he begins to talk to God, there's this moment where he asks, what God will I say is coming? And it's not just, I just need a name. It's like, what's the character of who you are? Like, what are you like, God? Moses' deep prayer, actually, we see, is actually a crying out to saying, I want to know you. It, it happens all the way through his life. I want to see your glory. It's actually, I want to know who you are. That's what it is um, when we see these places. And God responds in ways that are historically accurate. I am the, the, uh, the God and father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So he's talking about something he's been present in in the past. But, but more importantly, in this passage, he's really emphasizing, um, I am who I am. I be who I be. In the Hebrew, it's that idea. It's like this, this I am. I am present in both directions. And, and in English, or sorry, in Greek, we would hear it, ego, a me. That's how it was translated. So when they read the Old Testament in Greek, they would hear those words. And so when Jesus stands up and says, ego, a me, I, I am in English, we would, they would pause. We would pause. You're stuttering, Art. They would go, you're referring to what God self-designated himself as to Moses. They would know that this is a statement. And when Jesus says these statements, they are ready to get rid of him <laughs> because he's claiming to be God among them. And they know it, although we don't see it sometimes. He's very clear. And these images that he gives us, not only saying, I, I am, he says that sometimes. They said, well, um, they'll ask him questions about um, before Abraham or Moses, and he'll say, I, I am, I, I am him. And they're like, whoa. So they hear that. But there's other times, there's seven times in the book of John where it's very clear. I am, and then he gives some sort of, um, some sort of um, image that's there. I am the bread of life, or, or I am the, the way, the truth, and the life, or I'm the resurrection and the life, or I am, I am, I am the, the true vine. The, these are images that, that help us have metaphor for who God, what God is like among us right now. 
But in this text, and I want to highlight today is in this text when, when Moses is asking this question and he says, I am, it is a, it's, it's a statement of presence. We miss this sometimes. It's a statement of I am here. Not just describing and saying, now you've got a name to go rescue the people of Israel with. <laughs> this is the God among all the other gods Egypt, Egyptians thought. There's only one God. There's only always ever been one God. But it's not just he needed a name. <laughs> he needed the very character. He needed to say, "Who? what do you like? And what he says, actually, in I am, is, is an idea of a temporalness to it. There's a sense that he's here. I'm with you. He says that over and over. The I am is with you. I've sent you. And so this text, and, and even in this phrase uh, in our book that we're going to look at, and at page 11 is in this devotion, it says, God is always present. I love this part. This is a profound statement. If, if I, I am, what Jesus is saying, is first and foremost actually a declaration of God's presence among us, back forward right now, he's always present with us and for us, then that changes everything. <laughs> um, the uh, writers, Phil and Linda Somerville, say this. Think about the implications. There's no place you can go where God is not present. There is no struggle you fight where God is not present. There is no temptation you face where God is not present. God is present in your marriage. God is present in your home. God is present in your neighborhood. God is present. God is present. God's present in your school. God is present in your work. And God is present in your failings. God is present in your triumphs. God is present in your fears and your courage. God's present in your illness and your health. God is present when you are at your best, and God is present when you're at your worst. God is present in every step you take. Imagine how profoundly different our lives can be if we are just aware of and confident in God's presence. This is what this devotional book or in our series is going to be about. It's about approving our awareness of and confidence in the great I am. And one of those ways is to encounter God as he is. In a few moments, we're going to go into some sung worship for a while. And Nathan and Kayla are going to lead us in that. And then I'm going to speak a little bit more about one place that Jesus speaks about, I am, with the backdrop of Moses, talking about the ways in which, when he comes together, for what I believe he refers to as communion, it points to the life that is the Eucharist. So I'm going to ask you to go ahead, and if you're with us right now, we are doing communion in a little while. Make sure you grab um, something to, uh, if you have grape juice or wine, it's great, or any type of bread or cracker, that would be great as well. And in a few moments, after we do some worship, we're going to um, also respond to Jesus' declaration of He is. I am this. And it's going to help us, I think, be aware and even remind us as we go into communion about the very character of God. And what that means, really means for you and me in real life.
So I'm going to invite my friend JJ over. He's going to be over here. I'm going to put my mask on, and we're going to do communion together. I'd invite you to have your persons ready, and we're going to we're going to do this together for each other. We're going to serve each other. So I'm going to lead in this, and then and then. But I want to encourage you at home to do this. If you're home alone right now, you're not alone. <laughs> Communion is meant to be done together as we gather. But if we're not able to, even if we don't have the, the exact bread and grape juice or wine or whatever, God knows our hearts. We, we offer that to you. Ideally, we would be able to have these things together, but in this circumstance, not. But God knows that we're, it's an offer of faith. And so we respond and we are gathering together digitally to do this together. So if you're able to. And if you don't have those things present, just pause and be open to God in the best way possible in this moment, uh, responding to what's been said. Like the text said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, they will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. And on the night that Jesus was betrayed, hours before he was to die, in the book of John we see, that we know in the upper room this happened, even though it's not recorded as clearly in John, it's in other places. Knowing that he was about to die, Jesus said these words. He said, and he, after he took the bread from the Passover meal, he said, this is my body, which is, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me, as he offered it to them. And after he prayed for those things, he, he took the cup a little later and said, this is, this cup represents my blood, which is poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. The invitation here of this text is of life and intimacy with God. The, what, the I am who is present with us in that statement even, and saying about who he is. And the one who is not only with us and present for us, but for us that desires life for us, for the entire world. And so we respond to Jesus' words in this way. So JJ, um, I'm going to invite you in a moment. I'm going to, JJ is lactose intolerant, so we're going we're gonna, to, now the whole world knows that, whatever. But we're going to um, have a cracker for him that he's able to eat um, that doesn't have any milk or any type of um, products in it like that. And he's going to eat that when I offer it to him. And then he's going to dip it in the grape juice. I encourage you to serve each other somehow in that way, either doing it that way or just acknowledging that and say these words to each other, okay? So, you can say this. I'm going to say the bread of bread of um bread of life given for you. Okay, I'm going to say and this is the blood of Christ shed for you. body of Christ given to you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. Thank you, JJ. Oh, he's away a little farther now. But thank you, um, and we want to thank God in this moment. So let's pray together. Lord, I thank you for the ways in which you've met us through this time of communion. We acknowledge that you're present among us. Even as we're scattered at this time, God, we are one in you. I pray that you encourage our hearts in faith right now. That we would know that, that as you say, I am, we would be able to understand those metaphors in the next few weeks. And it would change our lives. Pray that we know that you're with us and among us and that you're for us. And I pray that that um, influences the way in which we interact and we know who you are and know who others are. Lord, I thank you for the grace that you've met us in and the way you love us. We pray all these things in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Well, we're near the end of our time and um, I'm really thankful for all um, of those who've been part of this and even as we've shifted to digital, um, the way in which we're trying to keep connected and stay connected to each other. 
A couple announcements are, again, we're going to be getting, um, having our midweek refuel group, which we will have a kids ministry for as well. And we'll be, again, masked up and spatially, or socially distanced. And we'll be doing that, but it'll be a larger space at Westview until we can get into our new space um, in February. We're looking at February. So we'll be online until then and doing this sort of, uh, this sort of interaction as well. And so I hope um, that you have met God in some way in this process, and I hope that you may have learned a little bit more about each other and our fun stuff up front um, as we uh, had some different fun kind of questions, uh, thinking about metaphors that we might find ourselves for and hopefully thinking and helping us get ready for some of the metaphors and ideas of who God is and how God reveals himself through Jesus. Uh, So we look forward to maybe seeing you on Wednesday nights here. And again, I would encourage you to, if you'd like to, begin. We can begin right now with the 7 IMs, this book. We're going to be walking through and do daily devotionals through this. And it's not too late um, to find this. You'll be able to find in the comments um, a way to order this on Amazon or other places. Um, And again, I'm just looking forward to um, the ways in which we can um, journey together during this time. Okay. I'd like to pray for us. Um, even though we're scattered, I'd like to pray for us as we go and, and pray a prayer that we often pray here um, at True, uh, just the way in which um, it hopefully encourages us as we go forward. So let's pray together. I want to offer you to God um, and all of us that are together collectively. Um, let's pray together as we go. Oh, Father, I thank you for the way in which you've revealed yourself. God, Jesus, I thank you for the way that you have been made known to us. Hmm. And it's good. I thank you for the way you've invited through communion for us to interact with you. And I pray now that you would mark us and send us in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit to be an alive people full of your grace. And I pray that wherever you send us or scatter us this week, (laughs) that we would rightly represent who you are and what you've done in the things that we say and the actions that we do. And I pray you would gather us back together, Lord, online and actually together midweek, Lord, to be able to speak of the ways that you've worked in our lives and the lives of people around us. May you have glory and honor and praise and all attention. And may we be enamored with you forever. Change our lives, Lord, we pray. We pray all these things in the powerful name of Jesus, the great I am. Amen. Thanks for being here. We've got a couple questions that we're following to interact with, so hopefully you can interact with those questions as well. And uh, we really hope that in this new year, um, we might discover more about who God is as we start this new year and all the adventures that are ahead. Grace and peace. Bye for now.